Hello, hello, hey. Wow, what a night, what a night. I was just saying to these guys before I get into it, you know, I, last week, two weeks ago, I was, in, uh, I was in New York and I was supposed to fly back to Vegas because uh, we, we had other stuff going on. I'm like, oh, hell no, I'm going to Cincinnati and I'm going to, uh, you know, Brown Silva. I see that fight two weeks ago and I know most of you were there too. Then two weeks later, to be here tonight at this event, forget UFC president and all that shit. As a fight fan, I mean, you're lucky if you see one of these every two years. I mean, it, it, unbelievable. What an unbelievable night. Everybody on this card performed, uh, you know, all the guys who did whatever. And how, Jamie Varner, what? Right? Jamie Varner breaks his, his leg in the, uh, in the first round and then fights through that round. It's just what an unbelievable performance by everybody here, and I appreciate it. And, as a fight fan, forget about all the other stuff. But anyway, 11,036 people were here tonight. We did a gate of uh, 1.7 million. Um, fight of the night, Barrow Dillashaw. Performance of the night, Dillashaw. The other performance of the night, Clark. Dillashaw wins $100,000, the belt. Clark gets $50,000. Who's got the first question? Would you regard this as the greatest upset in uh, UFC history? It, it's up there. This, it's tough to, you know, Sarah GSP was a pretty big one, too. Well, uh, just to ask you, follow up on that, you know, Barrow had won 30, 22 yeah. in a row and unbeaten in 34 fights. GSP didn't have that kind of I agree. at that point. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's big. It's huge. And then as far as the odds go, I mean, it's eight, eight, eight and a half to one. Apparently, there was uh, 10 times as many tickets written on Dillashaw, and yet the sports book still won. Oh, really? Yeah, so. That is interesting. Before, so while we wait for TJ to get here, if I could ask you first your opinion of Daniel, and I know Lorenzo said tonight that Jones and uh, Gustafsson would be in August. Did the way Daniel fought tonight do anything to change your mind, and might there be a way that Daniel would leapfrog Gustafsson? No, Gustafsson earned that fight. Gustafsson earned that fight. Um, you know, the Gustafsson fight was worthy of, a, of an immediate rematch. A lot of people were, were screaming when we didn't do that thing. He deserves that fight. And then as far as Daniel goes, he's definitely next in line. You know, I know he said he wants to wait, but I'm not a big fan of guys waiting that long because you never know what could happen. He could wait that long and somebody could get hurt and the fight might not happen. But we'll talk about that. We'll I'll talk to him about it. And I, I don't like to say this too often, but, you know, it's like Daniel's performance tonight was so good. It's like I almost wonder if he has to be in the conversation for best fighter in the world because that was a pretty dominant performance against a really good guy who had never been dominant like that. It was that. unbelievable. I mean, I agree. He looked, he looked amazing tonight. You know, it's funny. I was like... <laughs> I don't want to throw Kane under the bus here, but, you know, I'm sitting there talking to Kane, and, and, and he's jumping from side to side and doing all the stuff he was doing with Hendo. And I go, does he have any submissions? And, and Kane goes, eh. You know, he's like, he's like, he goes, you see that arm lock he tried? He goes, he's got the arm lock and everything. And right after we say it, he rear naked choked him, you know. So uh, he, he looked unbelievable tonight. Uh, Dan, can you talk a little bit about doing, you know, a lot of people – of course, they're saying, well, Hendo was not nearly as big as you in size. It was a big difference in the fight. You said in the cage you thought you could do that to John Jones. Uh, why, why do you believe you could, and do you feel like if you got the fight that you're ready to beat him now? Well, I mean, you know, it's like styles make fights, man. I mean, I was going to fight Rashad Evans in February, and I've said on record, I think in the division, I think Rashad Evans is a tougher fight for me because of his, of his ability to wrestle and, and I've seen Rashad compete since 2000 when we were in college. Um, for Jones, I mean, it's, it's a, that's a tough hill to climb, man. There's no just beating John Jones. You know, I'd, I'd have to have my best performance. And um, knowing that I was fighting for the UFC title, I would train as though I need to have my best performance. So I just think that Styles make fights and him and, you know, I match up well with him. You know, we haven't really seen him on his back for an extended period of time. But if I get on top of him, I think I can hold him down and, and get some offense off. And just curious, your thought then – you know, would you rather Jones beat Gustafsson so you would actually get to face Jones, who a lot of people think is the best in the world, or does it not matter to you? You just want to fight for the title. I mean, I, I want to be the champion. You know, I mean, that, that's really why I started fighting. You know, I'm 35 years old. It's not like I'm a kid, you know. I, I can't wait too long. But, you know, it, it means something to beat John Jones. You know, I mean, I know uh, Dana, you know, we all praise Alexander Gustafson for what he's done. Um, he's a great fighter. 
but um, there, it, it means a little bit more to beat a John Jones. It's like TJ tonight beating Henan Burrell, or look at what Chris Weidman beating Anderson Silva did. If uh, anybody else was the champion, I don't think it would have had the impact that, that it did. So, yeah, I would prefer for Jones to still be the champion. And last question for you. Can you just uh, elaborate on why you would want to wait? I mean, you've been a guy that said you want to fight and you want to you know, keep going. Now Dana says you want to wait. What, what would factor into that decision? Well, I mean, you know, I just think that at a point, you know, you, you, you look at your resume and, and um, I, I've, earned a, I've earned a title shot. I've, I've got five top ten wins. I've, I've been, I'm undefeated. I haven't lost a round. I haven't lost a fight. In two Nobody's, weight classes, too. In two weight classes. You know, I, 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 I won the Strike Force Grand Prix. I fought Bigfoot after a year and a half in the sport. I mean – my resume speaks for itself, you know, so, and you got to remember, guys, like, this is my fifth fight in the last, like, 15 months, you know, so I fight every three months or so. John, did you have a question? You uh, guys were the first two. Go ahead, and I'll, I'll give the next guy. Go okay. ahead. Uh, I just want to get a quick uh, housekeeping from you, if we could. Um, you said Varner had a broken leg. We thought it was an, an ankle. Was it yeah. actually a broken leg? Yeah. I, I, they, I, they came back and told me broken leg. Okay. Right after the fight. Um, do you know also uh, about Hennon, um, if he had any injuries? Obviously, we understand why he's not here, but did he have any uh, serious injuries that we know about? He, went, he's being tra he was transported right after the fight, okay. so he's gone. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, if I could for Robbie, please. Obviously, a, a fantastic performance tonight. Uh, you made your case for wanting another title shot right away. Do you feel like you, you did enough to get it done tonight? Because there are a lot of key fights at 170 right now. Yeah, I mean, I did a, did a good job tonight. Got a stoppage and uh, just – put everyone on notice and I'll definitely be in the conversation. And it seemed like during the second round you actually were laughing a couple of times after some takedowns. I was wondering if you could think about that moment and bring us back. I mean, what's going through your head as you're laughing in the middle of a fight? I'm just having fun and enjoying myself out there and trying to beat people up. Basic, just having a good time and enjoying what I, what I do for a living. Thank you. And for James, if I could, uh, obviously, no, probably not happy with the way things ended, but um, Similar to like the Weidman Silva when that one in, uh, ended by injury, it sounds like it, that was an injury that you helped incur, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, d to be honest, that uh, kicking low, kicking the calf, kicking the ankle was a big part of my training camp. It was something we wanted to do. We worked on it. Um, the very first kick I threw was low. I missed it. And then the second one, I think, was the one <clears throat> that, that hurt him. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't trying to break his leg, I guess, you know, I'd, uh, the whole idea was to, to uh, get the weight off that front leg and get it to the back leg to where he doesn't press forward as much. I guess it just kind of worked out a little bit better in my favor. You know, I don't, I, I you know, it wasn't my intention to, to break his leg, but, uh, you know, that, it, it happens. Thank you. And just one lastly, if I could, for Takea, please. Um, obviously, Takea has got a fantastic win streak uh, in the bantamweight division right now. Does he feel like he's uh, accomplished enough to be in that title picture right now, or does he feel like he still has more to do before he can be considered? Well, if there is a chance, I would like to get that title shot. So I guess that's the UFC has to decide. A uh, question for Daniel Cormier. Uh, Daniel, going into this fight, you said you believed your wrestling was going to be superior to Dan Henderson's. That was uh, obviously the case. But was there anything that surprised you personally once you got into that exchange about how easy it was? Was it about the level that you anticipated? Well, I mean, you know, you, you never underestimate a guy like Dan Henderson, but... Um, I just believe in my skill. You know, it's something I spent a lifetime accomplishing. You know, when most kids were summers, and when they were 15, 16 years old, summers hanging out at the, the lake and stuff, I was wrestling overseas in the world championships. So it's, it's my sport. It's the thing that I've done my entire life, and I believe in it 100%. And just to clarify uh, what was mentioned earlier about waiting for a title shot, uh, you told me this week uh, when I interviewed you that, that you believe that should John Jones lose his title to Alexander Gustafson, mm -hmm. that he would probably de be deserving of a rematch. So it's one thing if Jones retains the title and then you get that title shot, but should Jones lose the belt, do you at that point rethink the idea of waiting and take another fight? Yeah, I've got to just get back to work because, you know, John Jones is a, is a great champion. He's defended that title more than anybody ever has. And if he lost, you know, he deserves a rematch, just like Anderson Silva did. Those guys have, have earned the right to fight for the title as many times as they want, you know. So, yeah, I would definitely fight again. I'm not saying I'm opposed to just fighting. I'm just saying that I think after four years, four and a half years of the sport, what I've accomplished, you know, that I think I deserve a title shot. But as Dana said, you know, we're going to talk, and, 
And if they come up with something good, I'll, I'll fight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody. I mean, I can beat every one of these guys, so I'm, I'll fight them all. A question for TJ Dillashaw. Uh, TJ, uh, so much of your success leading up to this fight has been based on wrestling, and yet we saw you win a, a, a one-sided striking battle tonight. Was that the plan with uh, Dwayne Ludwig going in all along, or did that first-round knockdown uh, decide... No, it was, it was the plan. The plan was to move my feet a lot, not stand in front of him, use my angles, switch my stances up, and uh, just be the faster athlete tonight. And uh, after that, it was just kind of flow. You know, I didn't want to think about what I was going to do, just do what I was drilling in camp the entire time. I let Dwayne tell me what to do, and I just kind of reacted. You know, the plan was to take him down when need be, and, you know, I just didn't feel I needed to. It was asked uh, before you got here if this was the biggest upset in UFC history, if not UFC title history. Uh, do you think it is? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I don't even, I, I can't, I mean, I'm lost of words right now. The last question for uh, Dana White. Dana, um, you know, you always talk about the importance of not leaving fights in the hands of the judges. And yep. in both the co-main and the main event tonight, we saw spectacular finishes and fights that would have otherwise been headed uh, toward lopsided decisions. Does that occur to you in your mind about how, even though we're getting definitive answers in fights, that it's especially satisfying to see those finishes? Absolutely. I'm, I, I think that, you know, you see how hard these guys work and, and – uh, how much they put into this sport and, and, and trying to build their careers and build their legacies. And you want to take those guys out of the equation every time. You know, I, I do believe it's getting – I thought the referees did a fantastic job tonight. Everybody did a great job. But, you know, when it comes to judging, it's just always better to uh, stay on the side of taking them out of the equation. Thanks. Uh, this question is for Dana. Um, I heard that one of, the, one of the judges gave the second round to Hannah Burrell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about that one. Uh, here, uh, uh, Henderson say he might be considering going down to the middleweight. Can you see him right there on that division? Who, Dan? Yeah, Dan Henderson. Yeah, yeah. You that'd see him fighting right there? I think that'd be a good idea. Listen, Dan Henderson's still a powerful guy. He's a tough, durable guy. I mean, you saw the, you saw the, 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 the what he was taking tonight from, I mean, just that slam alone, you know, could have finished a lot of people. Dan is one of the toughest human beings I've ever met in my life. Thank you. He'd be a lot better with guys, you know. But the thing is about Henderson and, and what makes him so fascinating and such a legend is that the guy has fought, you know, at 85. He's fought guys at 205. He's fought heavyweights. I mean, he's fought everybody his whole career. That's, that's just how much of a stud Henderson is. Uh, this question is for uh, TJ. Um, how, do you, how, do you hear, uh, how do you manage to fight for four rounds and a half and still dancing and doing all what, what you, I mean, all what you did? Great performance. How do you do that? Uh, it's cause what I, that's what I trained to do. You know, I trained to fight five-round fights, even in my three-round fights. Um, I'm a very well-conditioned athlete, and I knew I had to keep pressing pressure the entire time I'm just uh, an aggressive fighter and you know that's when I'm my best is when I'm flowing and moving my feet and not standing in front of someone question for TJ uh, <coughs> after the, f the first knockdown uh, did you feel like he really changed it how did you deceive him in, in the in the fight after that I, I mean, I didn't really see in the first round, but coming out the second, I could see a different look in his eyes. You know, I could tell that I maybe had him broke, but uh, especially after the second round, I just knew I had it. You know, after I, after I walked through the second round and, and felt awesome in that round, and I just knew I had it. I could see it in his eyes. And then uh, Rafael Assunção is here, and we spoke with him, and he said that he asked you guys to, to challenge the, the winner. Is he the next contender? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting fight because of what just happened with those guys. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out. Can you comment on this fight, TJ? I know that you already yeah, you are still uh, it'll be nice commemorating. To, it'll be nice to get my win back from... Uh, Go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, it'll be nice to get that win back that I thought I had. So, uh, yeah, it'll be awesome to get it. Uh, Dana, um, can you... Okay, it's on. Okay, Dana. Okay, okay, it wasn't on a second ago. Um, this actually was a half half a, of an answer just a second ago. But um, with uh, like say GSP or Anderson Silva, if they lost, or even John Jones, you know, people talk about look an immediate rematch. What's your thought as far as Henan Barrow? I mean, he was a good champion. Do you think that? Yeah. He, I mean, yeah, he, yeah. he got he got dominated, but 
he know, hasn't lost in, 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 yeah. th- in you know, 35 fights, that, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's on the table, too. Okay. It wouldn't, and, it wouldn't be insane to give him a rematch, either. And uh, there's been a lot of talk today about August 30th and John Jones and Gustafsson. Where does that stand? Is it ru- rumor close? No, Gustafsson no. just signed a new deal, and he signed the bout agreement to fight John Jones in August. Um, now we're working on Jones. Uh, yeah, TJ, um, I'm curious, obviously this is the last uh, camp with, with Bang over at Alpha Male, so how do you plan on moving forward now that he's going to be in Colorado? Any chance you'll consider switching out there? I'm going to continue to train with Team Alpha Male, um, but I'm going to cross-train with Dwayne. You know, I'll go out and train with him on my, my, uh, when I don't have a camp, and I'll fly him out when I'm in camp. I'm going to continue to work with Dwayne. He'll be in my corner. Uh, I plan on getting my black belt under the guy. I mean, he's a genius. Um, but I think it's going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to have a new coach come in and be able to watch me there, and then I'll be able to get training from Dwayne. So I'm going to have multiple eyes on me, and i got to stay with Team Alpha Male. I mean, they've got me where I'm at, and they're the best sparring partners you can get for my weight class. All right, and then just a quick one for Dana. Um, obviously, you know, TJ is one of, like, the fourth guy off the tough program to, to claim the belt now, and you have Chris and Tony and Michael up there who are all, all former winners. How does TJ's win tonight sort of further vindicate the, the relevance of the show as a, a feeder system into the organization? I, I don't think it ever had to be valid. I mean, it has been since day one. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been instrumental in, in building the sport and, and building, uh, building guys. Like I said, we, we, we go in, these guys go in and live in this house and train with these guys for six weeks, and then there's 13 episodes, and millions of people know who they are when they come off that, that season of The Ultimate Fighter. Plus, I think every, every guy that's ever been on there would testify that it's one of the hardest things you could ever go through. It, it, it challenges you mentally, physically, emotionally, in every way you can be challenged, and it, it's, it's uh, the, the Ultimate Fighter isn't going anywhere. It's going to be here for a very long time. Right here. TJ, would you ever fight Faber? Why or why not? You know, I don't, I don't plan on fighting Uriah. I mean, he's the one that's got me into the sport. I've looked up to the guy ever since I've been into it. You know, he's helped me get to where I'm at. And, uh, you know, this would be like fighting your best friend. And we do it in the gym every day anyway. So I, w- I wouldn't like to fight the guy, obviously. And then for Dana, would you like to see that fight? And what do you think about teammates fighting each other? I love it. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, We'll see. We'll see what Uriah wants to do, and you know, you know how I feel about that. I've said it many, many times. Um, obviously, in, in that weight class, he's the champ. Uriah is one of the, you know, one of the top contenders. So we'll see what Uriah wants to do. Uh, down here, Chris. Uh, congratulations on your win. Um, how did it feel to go the distance for your first time? It was a great experience, uh, you know, have been past the second round in my career, so just to go three rounds versus, uh, you know, a good competitor, it was a, it was a great opportunity for me to, to kind of show everyone I'm not just a, a one-round uh, wonder, and I can go all three rounds and be comfortable in there and, and, and show my skill set. Love you too, Joe. And uh, for TJ, uh, we spent a lot of time filming both you and Chris at the same time, uh, all the way leading up to the fifth round. I mean, you just did not look gassed. I mean, do you attribute a lot of that to Dwayne, the two of you? Uh, to my camp. You know, I mean, we, we work hard. That's what we've done since I've been in there. I mean, Team Alpha Male, we're hard workers. You know, we're getting in there. We're, go- we're throwing every day. We're, uh, you know, working hard outside the gym even, too. You know, I'm just a de- dedicated lifestyle. TJ, question for you. Um, you said you wanted to switch stances. Obviously, you landed a lot out of both stances, but why was it? What did you see that made you feel that was important? Uh, the way his defense is, you know, he likes to back up and stick his hand in your face, and uh, it was just a weakness I saw of his to be able to land his split cross and get the angles and, uh, you know, just something that Dwayne's pointed out to me and I saw it in tape. Two other questions. I just didn't understand what you meant when you said I wanted to use my ankles. I don't usually hear, I hear people say, use my feet. What did you mean by use my ankles? Uh, not standing in front of him, getting off to the side and returning my other stance, both stances. Just, just kind of get, so he's not going to be squared, you're not going to be squared up to him. Yeah, I'm not in front of him where he can be dangerous like he is. I mean, he hits hard. He's a powerful athlete, so uh, standing in front of him is not a good move. 
And then my, my last question for you is uh, finishing the fight. You know, you, you didn't cruise in the last round when you had the chance. You know, mm -hmm. what, what is the thought process as you're going? Like some people might say, hey, you just stay away from them, make sure you don't get caught. You actually went for the finish. Can you? Uh, I mean, you heard Dana say one of those uh, judges scored the second round for Hinton Burrell, you know. So, uh, I mean, even though I knew I had all the rounds won, it's just kind of like, I don't know, I guess it's just been bred into me now ever since you hear Bert say it when you walk out and you hear these guys tell you and then, you know, I, I lose a decision that I felt like I won. It just kind of drives you to uh, to be that way. And I've just kind of always fought aggressive, so. Uh, my first question is for Dana. Robbie talked about wanting to get, a, to get another shot at the title. Do you think that that's a possibility as of right now with that win, or are you going to look at the whole Walter Wade no, picture? No, absolutely. I mean, how could, how could you deny him? <clears throat> the last, I mean, the fight with with um, Hendricks was awesome and his performance tonight and his performance before the Hendricks fight, I mean, there's no doubt he's, he's, uh, he's the number one guy in the world right now. And for TJ, you're the first uh, from Team Alpha Male to capture UFC gold. How does that feeling, how does that feel to you to have been the first to do that for the team? Uh, it's crazy. I got into the gym looking up to all those guys, you know, I mean, they showed me the way. And I've been in much of their, a lot of their title fights, camps, and uh, you know, it's just it, it doesn't. I don't know. It's kind of crazy for me to be the one to bring home the belt, and uh, it's a great feeling. Thank you. Uh, for Michael Kiesa, you you were caught in some crazy submissions there in the fight, and I was curious what was going through your mind during those moments, and basically, what did it take for you to get out of those uh, submissions and some of those moments that looked like it could have been a near finish for you. Uh, well, first of all, I fought very impatient. Um, That's why I don't like game planning for fights. I had a game plan, and, you know, obviously I'm relying on him to do something he wasn't doing from what I saw in the film. I was expecting him to throw a lot more heat, throw a lot more punches, and uh, I had my game plan kind of surrounding that. Um, everybody was talking about the body shot in the first round, and just like you said with the guillotine, that was that was, that was was pretty deep. Um, but other than that, yeah, just, you know, I'm, I'm a grapple Grapple based, grappling based fighter, so just had to tough it out. And you know, once you get sweaty and kind of pull out of those things, you don't have to be as technical. So he was a tough guy, he showed up for sure. And while I got the mic, I want to say good job, TJ. <laughs> and a uh, question for Tony, please. Uh, basically, you are now just putting together the wins in the UFC. You only have one loss to Michael Johnson. Is there anyone in particular in the division that you're looking at that you would like to make a run at? Of course, I'd like to uh, avenge that loss, but uh, it doesn't matter. Whoever they put in front of me, I'm going to make sure that my game steps up every single time. I'm a finisher. And I'm a submission artist. I'm a knockout artist. I'm just going to keep displaying my talents. Thank you very much. If I could follow up with TJ, please. Um, obviously, you've got Dana saying that the Asuncio rematch, rematch makes a lot of sense, as a, a brow fight would also make sense. Is one more preferable to you than the other? Not really. You know, I mean, boss man tells me what to do. I'm, I'm there. Um, I'm just excited to be in my situation. Thank you very much. Um, and if I could follow up with Mike briefly as well, uh, obviously it was a big victory for you tonight. You know, you're kind of dealing with these ultimate fighter cast members and that sort of thing. Do you feel like you've accomplished enough now that you can kind of step up a little bit and, and, and take on a higher level of competitor? Or do you feel like pretty comfortable where you're at at this point? You know, I'm always willing to step up. You know, my one loss is to the guy that's ranked 14th in the world right now. You know, I've shown that I'm willing to step up and face top tier competition, but I'm not at that point in my career where I can start calling people out. My job is to just pick up the phone when Joe Silva calls, sign on the dotted line and fight. And, you know, once I work my way into the top 15, top 10, you know, then I'll start being particular about who I want to fight. But it's just my job to show up and win. That's it. We'll take two more questions. Cormier's hungry. <laughs> I knew you would blame that on me. <laughs> I knew you'd blame it on me. Uh, <laughs> in the back here, uh, TJ, uh, back to your right. Uh, during all the buildup, did you ever have a doubt? There were so many people doubting you. Uh, you got to ignore it. You know, I mean, obviously you hear it, you hear how awesome the guy is, but you know, it's just uh, the mental mindset you, 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 for competition. I mean, you can't go into a competition scared. If you are, you're not going to be your, to your fullest. So uh, I went in there with 100% belief, even though I knew how great the champion was, I just had to believe in myself. And uh, th this one's a follow-up to you as well as to Dana. Do you prefer being on cards with a preponderance of lighter weight fighters? And uh, Dana, is that something that the UFC would consider, uh, trying to have a consistent weight of fighters across a card? 
I, I could care less. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we'll take one more question. Uh, TJ, right in front of you. Yeah. Um, you know, was it kind of nice being able to dominate him for five rounds, really leave no doubt in anybody's mind? TJ was the better fighter. It was no fluke. Or is that crap? And is it like you would have taken that first round knockout if you would have gone out from that right hand? You know, uh, I had that choke locked up, and uh, I didn't finish it. You know, and I was kind of pissed off about it at first, but now I'm kind of glad I didn't. You know, I got to prove myself even more. You know, if I would have just finished the choke, it could have been just, you know, that, that easy of a win. But uh, I was got to uh, show more skills than with the longer it went. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I got to dominate that, that, that much of the, the fight. And then, Danny, going back to what, what Kevin asked you about the, the biggest upset ever in UFC history, it's always, you know, Sarah and GSP. And do you think that part of that is, is just because of history or because legitimately we just haven't seen anything that crazy happen since, since that one time? Uh, the, the, the upset? The Sarah GSP upset. You yeah. Know, the fact that you hold it in such a high regard and, and the biggest upset, do you think that some of that has to do with history or do you think legitimately just nothing has happened that was that crazy? Yeah, it, it just sticks in your head because nobody thought, Sarah. It's, it's, it's very much like this. And I, but I guarantee you the odds weren't as big as this fight was. This, this is exactly the same? Well, there you go. It's a tie, I guess, <laughs> as the craziest upset ever. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're both right up there. You know, there's no doubt. I, I, you know, of course, <laughs> when, I was, when I was walking through, I was looking on Twitter, and everybody's like, yeah, you said he was the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. And, and you know, that, that's how the fight business is, you know. Guys lost, won 35 straight, hasn't lost in almost 10 years. You lose one fight, and you suck. You know what I mean? You were never as good as everybody thought you were in the first place and everything else. No, T.J. Dillashaw came out tonight and put on a, you know, an unbelievable performance. And I, I, I think that Hannah Burrell, you know, the, you can have those. Remember, I was telling you guys before the fight, you know, everybody wakes up and just not your day. You don't have that day. I don't believe that happened to Hannah Burrell tonight. I think that first shot in the first round, he never, he never came back from that. That, you know, that would have knocked almost everybody out. Hannah Burrell took that shot and a zillion more through five rounds and, and stayed in there and, and, uh, you know, the kid's, the kid's tough as hell. Um, one thing before I wrap this thing up. UFC returns to the Kotai Arena at uh, the Venetian Macau on Saturday, August 23rd. Uh, the main event is Kung Lee versus Michael Bisbing. And uh, the co-main event is Hector Lombard versus Dong Young Kim. Thanks for coming, everybody. We appreciate it. What a night. Have a great weekend.